hello beautiful thank you for stopping by my channel today my name is chisom if you're just seeing my face for the first time or if you're just bumping into this channel for the first time thank you for stopping by if you're here to subscribe please subscribe like this video you're about to watch so it can be recommended to more people who will need it today we'll be learning how to make this beautiful drawstring dress with bishop sleeve now this dress can be altered into a short or a long dress it can even be altered into a top believe me so if you're interested in learning how to go about the making of this beautiful dress please keep on watching and watch this video to the end so you don't skip any important part now we'll start by drafting the upper part of the dress first and for that i will fold my fabric into four i'll fold it into two first like this then i'll go ahead and fold it again making four folds now when folding it make sure you have extra space for the zipper allowance because i am folding this for both the front and the back the amount of fabric to be on fold should be enough to accommodate the biggest part of your body measurements divide by four plus extra inches for allowance okay now i'll go ahead and rule a starting line to serve as a guide at the top of the fabric and this is going to be the shoulder line and from that line i will measure to get my chest line and my bust point then my waist line i will add extra half inch for joining this upper part to the lower part so the half length i will be drafting is 17 inches now i will make it 17 and a half i'll go ahead and rule these lines to be more visible for you to see okay so here is the center and all the measurements i'll be taking is going to come from there i'll start off by marking half of my shoulder measurements on the shoulder line and i will mark that also on the chest line then i'll connect these lines to meet each other for the shoulder i will come down by one inch for the shoulder slope and then i'll come in from the center front by three inches and connect the shoulder slope now on the chest line i'll come in by a quarter of my bust measurements and i will be adding one and a half inch for joining allowance also on the waistline i'll come in from the center by a quarter of my waist measurement and i'll also be adding one and a half inches joining allowance now i am going to connect the point on the waist to the point on the chest line next i'll measure to get the mid armhole and i'll go in by half of an inch then i'll curve that out with my free hand next i'll come in from the end of the shoulder here i'll come in by 3.5 inches this is going to be the neck width then i'll connect that point to meet the bust point line this is how deep i want the front neckline to be For the back neck depth, I used 1.5 inches, then connected it to the front neck width because we know that the front and the back neck width are to be the same, okay? On the waistline, I'll come in by half of my nipple to nipple measurement plus half of an inch stitching allowance. I'll mark that on the waistline and also on the bust point, then I'll connect the points with a straight line. For my dart intake, I'll measure half of an inch on both sides of the dart leg and also connect the two sides to meet the bust point. Now I'm going to replace the half of an inch, that is half of an inch on both sides is one inch. So I'm going to replace it on the side, then blend it into the side. So before I cut this out, I'll add half of an inch sewing allowance on the armhole area and also on the shoulder line since I have my allowance already on the side. Okay, so I'll add half of an inch allowance on the armhole and on the shoulder, then I'll cut it out. Remember to trim off the back neckline first. After trimming off the back neckline and cutting the shape out, i will separate the back from the front then trim off the front neckline after cutting out the front piece i'll transfer 
this that to the other side as well so what i'll do is i'll notch the two sides of the dart and then on the boss point i'll poke with my pin to pierce through to the other side then i'll flip it over and chop that point where the pin came out from then i'll connect the two notched parts on the down side to the boss point and there i have my dart on the both sides as well for the back part i will not be adding any that okay if you want to add that on your own is totally fine i'll just add zipper allowance on the top part i'll add one inch and i'll connect it with this lens to meet the down part like i am doing right now this is to help the center back to relax a little bit okay now i have already added this one inch at the side okay this one inch that i did not add on the lower part is already on the side so i'll come in on the lower part by one inch and i'll connect it to the top part where my one inch starts this thing i am marking like this is the zipper allowance please do not get confused i just want my back my center back to relax that is why i marked the zipper in a slanted form on the center back i'll be going up by two inches this is because we all know that the center back is shorter than the front okay so i didn't do that minusing on the side of the front so i'll be reducing it on the center back then i'll connect it to meet the side like i am doing right now this is all for the back i'll now cut it out i've cut out the front and the back piece the next thing i'll do is to cut facing for both the front and the back neckline if you want to use a bias strip for yours is fine but i will cut out a facing that i will use to turn the both necklines next thing i'll do is to stitch close the dart on the front piece then after stitching close the dart and turning the necklines i will now place the both pieces together and join them at the sides before we we'll cut out the skirt part now for the skirt part i have folded my fabric into two because we'll be cutting the front part first the volume of fabric on fold is my hip circumference divided by four plus extra seven inches now that seven inches is going to serve as the side frill if you want yours to be longer you can go ahead and add to that okay now the length of this skirt is 50 inches 50 inches is because i want by the time i gather it i can still leave it long or short whichever way you want it you can even add to the 50 inches length if you want it very full by the time you gather it okay so i'll rule a line on top which is going to serve as my waistline now i'll place my tape on the waistline and mark my waist to hip length please note that we are making our marking on the right side of the fabric because that is also where we'll be stitching on on the waistline i'll mark my waist divide by four we are not adding any allowance on this okay because the only allowance we have is the one that we drop as the frill so we are marking body measurement divide by four without any allowance so on the hip i am marking hip divide by four and i'll connect the hip line to the waistline now what i have on the hip line is what i will be marking on the hem line that is my hip divide by four without any allowance i'll mark it on the hem line and i'll connect from the hem line to the hip line with a straight line so i blended in the excess i have on the waistline into the hip area so what i have on all the sides from the waist to the down is seven inches now i'll cut this out and turn it over to the other side so the mark i have here i'll transfer it to the other side as well 
Here is the other side of the front part. I will also measure from the waist to mark my hip line. And on the hips line, I will mark my hips measurement divide by 4. That same figure is what I will take all the way from the hips to the hemline. Now on the waist, I will mark my waist measurement divide by 4 and connect it to the hips line. Now after making the mark on the both sides of the skirt pattern, I will place this on another fabric to cut out the back pattern. Now the only difference between the front and the back is that the back is going to have zipper allowance. I will go now and cut it out the back pattern off camera. I have cut out the back piece and it's right under the front piece. Now I will give them a notch on the waistline. Just give it a little notch of about half of an inch inwards, making sure that all the four pieces get this cut. Okay, just go ahead and give it a notch on the waistline and leave it that way. After making the notch, I'll open up the skirt pattern like so and I'll follow the, from that notch I made on the waistline on the frill side, please. This is starting from the frill side, okay? I will fold in the rough edges and sew it to give it a neat finishing. So I'll fold the top part, the sides and the bottom part of the skirt. I'll do this for both the front and the back on the both sides okay now this is from that side that the frill we start that is that seven inches that we left for the frill please so i'll go and do that right now and come back and show you what i mean now this is what i was trying to explain to you i have finished up the rough edges on the side that will drop as the frill from the top to the side all the way and also the hemline was folded as well okay just to give it a neat finishing appearance now this for the center back i closed it and left a space for my zipper so from the top i gave about nine inches opening for the zipper allowance i'll place the front on the back piece and align them properly i'll make sure the notch area are matching each other which indicates the waistline and i'll go and sew on the mark that i have there after sewing on that mark i'll give about half of an inch or 0 0.75 inch and make another stitch which is going to be the room for the elastic or the rope whichever one you want to use for yours I have made the stitch on the both sides of the skirt and it has joined the front and the back together. Now if you look closely you see the second stitch I was talking about. Now in between these two stitches is where I will be passing the rope for the drawstring. Okay, so for the drawstring, I have cut a long strip of fabric that I will be using to make the strip. I cut this with 1.5 inches width, 1.5 inches width, and the length is long enough to reach the bottom part of the skirt. Now I'll fold this and sew it to make a strip that will be used to pass in between the two lines that I have made on the skirt. Next, I'll be attaching the upper part to the lower part. Okay. I'm going to open it up, open up the skirt pattern from the center back and I'll match them at the side. I'll make sure the side of the top is matching the side of the skirt and I'll pin it to ensure it stays in place. Then I'll go ahead and join it with half of an inch sewing allowance. Please make sure you move the frill out of the way so it doesn't get stuck in between the waistline. I have attached the upper part to the lower part and I gave it a good press. Now our side frill is very much intact. The space we let we created for the drawstring is still open. Nothing has tampered with it. Now if you do this correctly, you will have exactly something like this. Here are the strips i created for the drawstring and the length is as long as the skirt length. I'll use this pin and poke through the strip like so 
and lock it then i'll pass it from the bottom part of the skirt and i'll drag the rope all the way to the top part now i have come out on the top part i am going to run a stitch across like so to hold down the rope with the skirt so it doesn't pull out then afterwards i'll trim off the excess that is coming out right here i'll go ahead and repeat the same process for this other side of camera now i'm done passing the rope for the other side and this is the outcome with the help of this rope, you'll be able to drag this as much as you want. You can drag this to make it become even a top, a short dress, a very short dress or a long dress. So that is the good thing about this rope. Why this rope is preferable to the elastic is because it will help you drag it as much as you want okay so you can see how much i am dragging this and the more you drag it the more beautiful the dress even becomes now now what is left is to cut the sleeve i'll go ahead and fold my fabric for the sleeve cutting now for the sleeve i'll come down by six inches from the sleeve head because this sleeve has a little puff on the shoulder line and on that 6 inches mark, I will mark 11 inches, okay? We know that it is a little bit exaggerated. So that is why I am adding like 2-2 two, two inches extra to my normal sleeve measurement, okay? Now I, have, I am going to measure the length of this sleeve and I'll be adding extra 4 inches to my normal sleeve length. Normally my sleeve, my full sleeve length is 21 inches, then I'll be adding 4 inches to that, making 25 inches. And on that sleeve length, I'll mark 12 inches, then I will connect the point to meet this point. With my free hand, I'll connect from the scalp height to the sleeve cap, just like I am doing right now. Just go ahead and curve it out with your free hand. That is all for the sleeve. I am going to cut it out right now. I'll open the sleeve up now so I'll be able to trim off for the front part. This is because the front part is usually deeper than the back part if you want it to relax on the armhole area. Okay, so just go ahead and mark out a little like half inch just like I did here and trim it off. So I'll go and attach the sleeve to the armhole area. For the sleeve head, I will gather it into the armhole area. And for the lower part, I'll fold it and create an elastic channel where I'll be passing elastic. Then after I'm done, I will show you guys the final result. I already have a couple of tutorials where I did this type of sleeve that i had to pass elastic through okay so i'll go ahead and fix it now and i'll show you guys the final result so here is the final look of the dress on me you can see how beautiful it is on my body so thank you for watching to the end of today's video if this video was helpful to you please 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 and please support me by subscribing like and share this video i'll see you again in my next tutorial bye